Hello, and once again, it's CES time. So today I'm going to be building my Inwin Air Force. I've gone for a very distinct theme. Everything is looking very black on the table. So let's take a close look at all of the hardware, all of the new stuff from us, and all of the new stuff from all of the hardware manufacturers. So going into the loop, we have a full Acetal Vector 2 block. Uh, we have uh, acetal magnitude, which I'm gonna change up to be completely black with the accent frame. I have a kinetic D5, which I will swap the little white piece for a black piece. I think you can see where this is going already. All the fittings, full torque, all black. There's a mixture of micros and full size for various places around the build. It's definitely gonna be uh, an interesting tube layout. I have uh, the pre-bent black metal tubes. So the bends are mostly actually gonna be in the back of the case and then tubes will just come forwards to the components. Uh, we'll, we'll get there pretty soon. So for that, I have the uh, loop uh, metal tube cutting tool. I have an iFixit just fresh for the build. So all of the lost bits are in the box, definitely. Uh, then radiators, I'm gonna somehow squeeze in three 360s into the Air Force. I have two S's and a P. The P's are cross flow and from my math in CAD, they should fit perfectly inside, but actually putting them inside might be a different story. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And then uh, at the heart of everything, a Ryzen 7950X. We have for that a uh, Crosshair X670E gene. Felt strange saying crosshair then, but yeah, a crosshair gene finally is back. I'm really excited to use that, and that's my board that I want to use again in another in another build. But uh, I've lent it to this one, uh, and a brand new reference Radeon RX 7900 XTX, which uh, you know, pretty pretty hot hardware right now, uh, hard to get hold of. So. Uh, Really pleased that we have it in time. Uh, storage wise, just a very simple uh, one terabyte M2. Uh, Heatsink removed already so that it's gonna fit inside the DIM2 slot on the Gene. Uh, we like using the, the DIM2s because we can just swap out the whole thing into whatever build we might have in the studio and we have like an install already done. You don't have to take the build apart, so it's really fun. Fitting with the black theme, I specifically requested no RGB on the RAM. So I have a set of Trident Z5 that's full uh, black on black on black. Uh, no RGB, black accent on the top. Um, it's not the Expo spec because the Expo spec has a silver line and it's less black. So it's it's the XMP spec, but hopefully uh, I get it running just as good. Uh, power wise, I needed more space in the build. So I'm going to be relocating the PSU and I have an SFX just to make it a little bit less kind of in intrusive inside the build. So uh, a thousand watt SFX PSU from Silverstone should be absolutely plenty for the 7950 and the 7900. The case itself, uh, just like Attila, I'm using the Air Force. I have a few of his red parts that I've stolen because his originally was blue and red. Mine started life as being 100% black everywhere. So I've got the, I've got the red feet. Uh, I requested some extra red parts from Inwin so I can make a red frame on both sides of the case. Then I also have some extra pieces. Uh, you'll see where these fit, and these are basically the corner piece. I have two extra full ones. You'll see why when I start to build the case. And then lastly, I have my custom motherboard tray. And uh, actually, a little bit more than a motherboard tray. I managed to make it in one giant piece, and I've been kind of following the design of the case. I'm hoping when all the black stuff starts to layer up, uh, it's gonna look like kind of minimal, but really interesting, interesting kind of decorative shapes that you wouldn't normally see in a PC. So first off, I'm gonna put the 
important hardware together. I'm going to put the CPU, GPU uh, with the with the blocks, assemble all of that, and then I'll just be handling the big pieces and trying to squeeze the radiators into the case. Okay, so now we have the motherboard assembled with the CPU, CPU block, memory, and the SSD inside there. Uh, we have the beautiful Radeon 7900 XTX assembled with its water block, which was ready weeks before the launch. Uh, we have the case all put together with the motherboard tray. Things are a bit different from the standard case now because the motherboard's inverted. It's actually moved up a little bit and the SFX PSU will be going down at the bottom uh, and that makes space for essentially uh, where the bottom rad would have would have hit the PSU or the cabling and we could have only had a 120 maybe at the bottom uh, with the PSU moved up a little bit there's now space for a 360 there so the two slim 360s will go at the bottom and at the top and then they're going to be joined up at the front by the P360 so we need to work out how to screw all three radiators together outside of the case then drop them inside and screw from all three sides at once with the radiator screws to get it all mounted uh, for that I'll have to take this front ring back off the case so I've got that extra bit of space to slide it in uh, I should be able to do it with all the fans assembled with all the fans wired with the uh, OmniLink cables and We'll see how that goes. So far, we've put all the radiators together outside of the case. You saw um, we had to lay them out and screw the top rads onto the crossflow at the front. Uh, so they're using uh, like micro fittings in the corners with MM7s that are installed in inside front crossflow rad. And then the bottom and top rads each have uh, the replacement black surface extenders with the Micro 90 screwed onto the top using the little six mil hexagon. So we had to take off those two fans to get access to screw them in. Uh, repeated with the top. And then with all three radiators assembled, they were just a perfect fit to slide into the case. So the front frame, uh, the front red frame came off the case to allow enough space to get all three in together. Then uh, there are two very short metal tubes right in the back and they just pushed on to what I kind of devised for pass-through fittings. Um, because we need to make the 
pass through immediately turn in the back of the case so the side panel still fits on. It's actually a, a torque surface extender with an FF90 screwed on the back side uh, and they fit together really tight, sandwich around uh, uh, custom mid plate and then all the tubes can link up in the back. Uh, the next thing we put in was the reservoir. In a very similar way, the body of the reservoir is spun backwards. It has uh, uh, MM14 rotaries put on the back side and then they again have the uh, torque surface adapters directly into 90s. They were a bit fun to uh, screw together. We had to kind of like lasso a, lasso a fitting from inside to tighten onto the 90 because the 90s couldn't quite spin past each other where it's so small. Uh, the motherboard, however, went much easier. That's just directly on its mounting holes and now it's all ready to go. Tubes are put, uh, well not the tubes, but the um, pass-through fittings are installed everywhere and we're ready to make the tubes. So on the front side, there will be uh, two pre-bent tubes going down and two pre-bent tubes going up from the GPU. And then in the back, uh, three extra tubes are gonna link everything together. So, time to make tubes. Okay, so now all of the tubes are finished. It went very smoothly. The only really difficult one were the two very short bent tubes uh, that go from the mid plate up to the CPU block. Just because it was really uh, challenging to get the full length of the tube inside. So I had to cut it before I had an accurate idea of how long it should be. And on my first attempt, I cut it too close to make another cut. So I had to take another pre-bent and make it very slightly shorter. I think it was two or three millimeters too long uh, vertically. And then when I had one, uh, copied it very easily. So there weren't really many tubes to make. The tubes on the back also went really nice. All done first time. The metal tube cutter worked really good. After the tubes were done, I moved forward and started on the cables already. So I'm making custom cables for this build. Because it's the biggest piece of work, I decided to start with the 24 pin. Uh, they're luckily a uh, one-to-one -one pin out on this PSU, so I just needed to make 24 straight wires. But so it had a nice curve through the case, they're all a slightly different length. That made it quite time consuming for me because I first made the shortest wire, then the longest wire, then cut 12 in between those two sizes, and then the back root to, that makes the inside uh, loop into the motherboard. They're about uh, two centimeters shorter. And then because I'd made every wire a different length, had to make every sleeve a different length, do them one by one. But I think it was about three hours in the, in the 24 pin. And then very quickly, just two wires for the pump so that I could uh, start filling it up. I first tested it with the uh, leak tester, no problems on air, held uh, half a bar and then straight for the cryofuel clear coolant. It took just under two liters. It's not such a big loop, but there's a lot of radiators in it. Now I'm going to go around the back and we'll check out what else needs to be done on the cables. So as you can see on the back, the 24 pin is finished and that roots very nicely around the tubes. Everything looks really black. So I went for all black sleeving as well that it kind of blends together in one single mass. And it's more about the texture and the shapes than it is about the contrast of color and lighting in this build. Uh, you can see 
the four cables that I'll be tackling next, they're the OmniLink cables from each set of fans. So there's one from each radiator in this case. Uh, the way I, want, I oriented the fans, uh, they didn't kind of flow into each other. So I'm gonna keep three chains and hopefully make nice sleeve details out of these. Uh, because I can just easily disconnect the extensions from the fans, uh, the fans will all stay in place. I won't sleeve them. And then these, I'm gonna trim them to length, put new crimps on, reconnect the four pin header, and just sleeve these with uh, SATA power, um, or no, SATA data uh, sleeve, and they should go neatly to the motherboard. I've got two at the top, one from the front fans, one from the top fans. They will go to the two headers on the top corner of the motherboard. And at the bottom, I have one from the pump and one from the bottom radiator. So they will go up here and into the bottom right corner of the board where there are uh, two more PDBM headers. And with that, everything should be very neatly controlled on the board. And I hope these, these cables will turn into quite nice swooping details on the back. And then last, but definitely not the least amount of work. I will need the two uh, eight pin EPS cable sleeved, which go down here and two eight pins for the radio. So let's get to it. Eh? Right then. All of the cables are completed. I started first with the difficult ones. So uh, the OmniLinks were the first to be sleeved. That's the first time I've ever sleeved OmniLink cables. And I used, uh, because these were just four pins, not eight pins, because they are non-DRGB fans, I actually used uh, USB size uh, MDPC sleeve. And I just basically sleeved it as if it were a SATA cable. So I cut off the four pin fan connector to the length I wanted. Uh, the wires are nicely marked that I knew I could put the fan crimps back on the right way around and then the connector would fit. I left them all four stuck together in one ribbon and the USB went over it nice and flat to make a kind of like small SATA looking cable. Uh, I did make three, one for each set of fans. But then when it came to turning on the motherboard for the first time, realized that one of the headers at the top is actually permanently full speed with no control. Luckily, I could connect the front fans to the top fans. So in the corner up here, I managed to just join up the two sets of OmniLinks. So these six are in series. And then there is one extender from the back top of the case uh, across the top and into the motherboard. Uh, everything's set at 40% now and it's very, very quiet. Uh, the rest of the cables then, I had to make the EPS connectors and the PCIe power connectors. Thankfully, still with eight pins on the Radeon, so very familiar, very straightforward, and I didn't need to learn how to do micro just yet. Everything plugs in quite nicely down at the PSU end and everything sweeps across kind of as planned. The holes in the motherboard tray were not exactly made for cables. I just made lots of holes um, in, the, in the style of the case and they worked out quite nicely. I had a good gap between the tubes and the frame of the case for the uh, graphics card power cables and everything else just knotted through. Probably the only thing that I don't love about the cables is that the splits for the uh, PCIe connectors ended up in the front. I might even repin them solder at the back and they get hidden by the cables. Uh, otherwise, really happy with the build. The uh, lighting works really nicely. There's just two very subtle red elements on the GPU block and inside the VRM heatsink of the motherboard. I have them turned just a really dull red. Uh, it looks great, like layers of, of Black finish on this build look fantastic uh, from the metal tube, the all metal block, the metal accent on the magnitude and the frame in the acetal top look great. Black on black fittings, black tube, I think it was the right way to go. Uh, maybe one day some black coolant in here would look good too. Uh, so I know normally we would 
always display the case with the side panels off, but I think I will actually keep this one permanently with the side panels off because it's, it's so nice to look through the whole case. Uh, the front's really transparent and it looks like the hardware is floating, especially with the tubing for the reservoir being concealed and the radiators just come off like a total illusion, like they have no tubes at all with the, the fans meeting the fans on the inside edge. So uh, I'm really happy with how that looks and uh, the side panels sort of don't help it, makes it look a bit more conventional if anything. Thanks for dropping by and checking out my Air Force build. If you haven't seen Attila's Air Force build, uh, go and check that as well. They ended up completely different. Uh, we always knew we were gonna like go with uh, rival colors with the red and black scheme and the white and blue scheme. But turning out one of them inverted with a tiny motherboard and one of them conventional orientation with a huge motherboard, they couldn't be more different. So uh, check them both out, check out the different approaches. It was really fun to work with the Inwin. Uh, thanks to everybody else who also supported products, uh, especially uh, AMD, both the Radeon and Ryzen team contributing here, and also to G-Skill for the memory kit. Uh, we have a beautiful Silverstone PSU and all the cabling supplies from MDPC. Uh, none of them could have been any better and I think they really suit our components as well. So thanks very much for watching. Let us know in the comments which of the two Air Forces you like the most, whether it was my red and black one or Attila's white and blue one, and be sure to subscribe and come back for more. See you next time.